I go ahead and darken oh, it. Is it safe you, to darken you it? You are ready to put that on the wall. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and do the eyes here. Um, look at where the circle is, and uh -huh. between these two lines right here is where the eyes, uh, the manga eyes, are going to come in. Really? They're way um, down there? Yeah. It's because the top of the head, you're <gasps> making a sort of a childlike oh figure here. And so uh -huh. we... Uh, so what is that, like a little crescent moon shape? Yeah, you do sort something? of a, curl, uh, a curving shape as the upper eyelash. Do two sort of vertical lines, and then a kind of smaller more um, horizontal uh, line is the lower eyelash. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna You're just, way ahead of me. I know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just rushing okay. through this. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that. Now, one thing that uh, beginning artists sometimes forget, the blank space between things is as important as the uh, lines that you're making. Negative uh, space. Exactly, right? exactly. So I'm being very careful to maintain this same gap uh, between these lines. And I'll go ahead and... Really, you're just trying to do the mirror image of that one eye that you just drew as best you can. And, you know, the placement of the eyes is crucial. So That's why I, I do that first. Now, okay. eyebrows can kind of float just above each one of the eyes, but uh, we're using this guideline here as our placement for the eyebrows. Uh -huh. Okay. And then the nose, this should be pretty easy because we've got these, the bottom of the circle and this sort of vertical line, this is the nose is so minimal in manga, just like a little dot almost. Um, they that? really don't emphasize the nose at so all. My, mine's looking a lot like an alien. Well, is that kind of what it's? That could, you, this could be your alien <laughs> character. I'm sorry. Don't be mean to the host, <laughs> Mark. She will throw you out. This is uh, where the mouth goes, right between... Uh, these two points, okay. um, the chin and the nose, basically. I'm keeping it very, again, they don't emphasize, they don't start drawing lips and lipstick and so forth. They just leave it as a simple line. Okay. And um, if you want, we can go ahead and indicate some ears. Um, keeping it simple, notice they start at the top where the upper eyelash is, and then maybe come down until just above uh, that curve of the cheek. Is that about right? Yeah. Close. Okay. <laughs> and now that we've got, now that we've got all that, I mean, we've done pretty much all the hard stuff right now. Um, at this point, it's time to just drop in some hair. And boy, you know, we can go line by line, but I would encourage you to just get creative at this stage, and give uh, this character the kind of hairstyle you want. Now, here's the tricky thing. The Japanese uh, manga style involves a very large section given over to the hair. And so you follow along uh, above that first yeah. guideline. That's where the real top of the hair is going to be. And this is going to give you the proper dimensions All right. um, of a Japanese manga face. Okay. Um, and you could give her some cute uh, little pigtails if you like. Why not? I'm just going to drop them in like that. Okay, wow, we're almost done. Yeah, okay. see, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> okay. And the reason I go through all of that is just it's very, very important to get all these uh, elements balanced, and that's why you take the extra time to do those guidelines. How's she looking? I think she looks great. <laughs> She's an evil twin. You missed your calling, <laughs> Jeannie. Yeah, you think? Yeah, if, I, if my hand ever gets tired, I'm going to just pick up the phone and call you. All right. And you can help me do some spare pages. I charge big bucks, though. Oh, I don't know. So I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so is there good. any corrections you would make here? Today? Well, if we have extra time, I can go ahead and drop in the, uh, the neck. Notice how it Ooh, comes okay. in. Give That's her a neck. Little, just a little wider than the mouth. Is that, and if you want to get some detail wider. crazy, go ahead and do a highlight up here in the eyes. Uh, That's a little circle like that. Oh. And you can even darken in uh, a little bit of the uh, pupil. Oops. The, Upper I, the upper area of the iris tends to be pretty black and dark, and then you just get a little dot in there for the pupil. Okay. And I think maybe that'll do it for us. Huh? All right. 
I think we've we've got something here. <laughs> we got something to to, <laughs> to put on eBay. Oh All yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Later on tonight. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Mark. This Thank was you. awesome. Look was what he did in like a few awesome. minutes. This is great. Well, let's go back to the other studio and hear more about your other books. Excellent. Okay. Great. So, Mark, your book Mickey Falls has been optioned by Paramount Pictures. Right. And Brad Pitt's Plan B production studio for development as a feature film. So should we expect that to be an anime film, animated, or feature film with actors in a well, script? Well, as far as I know, they are uh, looking to do a live action film. Really? Uh, and you know, with Hollywood, sometimes the movie is not exactly like the book. Uh -huh. So we need to brace ourselves for the possibility that it might not even be set in Japan anymore oh, really? when they're uh, done with it. I did a little sleuthing uh, and the screenwriter that was attached uh, to the project seems to have indicated that it might be set in LA. Oh really? Yeah, so watch out. <laughs> so she may be falling out of a building in that, uh, downtown LA exactly, instead of Japan. Exactly, exactly. Everything's gonna change. I don't know. What to, to, oh, it's all, yeah. wow. I just assumed, I, I assumed it would be anime, but that's, that's interesting. Yeah. I think it's very very intriguing to have a, a man, if you don't mind me saying that, <laughs> writing a love story from a teenage girl's perspective. You know, I uh -huh. write young adult novels from teenage girls' perspectives, sure. and that's challenging enough just yeah. to get into the age, the mind, right. you know, of that age. Yeah. But to do it with the, you know, cross gender <laughs> right. thing, I think is extra challenging. Sure. So I'm curious, what did you have to access with inside yourself to mm -hmm. be able to get into Miki's head? Yeah, yeah. How'd well, you do that? <laughs> it's kind of tricky, you know. I think if you're going to do a love story, it's generally going to be from the uh, a, a female narrator's point of view. With you're thinking that the readership is going to be largely female, mm -hmm. and so they want to be reading from the point of view. And so, yeah, that I just had to sort of flip my brain around uh, to to try to imagine what it would be like uh, to experience all this as a girl. And you know, it may sound kind of cheesy and hokey, but I do really believe that fundamentally the human experience is the same uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to love, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be a, a boy uh, or a girl who's experiencing it. You know, uh, I, th I felt that I could draw upon my own experiences uh, in mm -hmm. the past when I was a teenager. Um, you know, I think people have this idea that uh, that boys experience uh, are not so interested in romance, say, uh, as girls uh, are. But uh, I, I certainly uh, had idealized rose-tinted visions mm -hmm. uh, of love uh, at that age and well beyond that age, mm -hmm. frankly. And so it wasn't that hard for me to, to sort of tap into that. Did you I try to... Um Interview teenage girls to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, check things out with them um, and run Well, it by. I had uh, not a teenage, <laughs> but uh, babysitter or my, my editor, uh, Susan Rich, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a woman was able to sort of proofread mm -hmm. uh, the entire series that way. And there was, I'm proud to say that there was only one instance in which she felt I was trying too hard to be girly girly. Okay. Uh, and I had some line in there about one of the characters saying, you know, Oh, you know, that boy will never, f you know, you can't find a boy like that. The hotties are not going to be in this club or something like that. And, he's, and she said, you know, Mark, don't try to imagine that <laughs> girls spend their all their time talking about hotties all the time, mm -hmm. you know. And so, yeah, I cut that out. Even though they and, do. And, even though they do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Susan that we said this. Um, but yeah, that was one time where it felt like I was straining a little too hard to, mm -hmm. to sound like, oh, this is the way girls talk. Yeah. yeah. So what age group do you think is reading the Mickey Falls series? Like what, like what age? Because I know yeah. that generally they tend to be, you know, younger readers read up. Yeah, so. that's true. Very how, much so. How old are these, what, like 12, 13? I think, yeah, and, and even younger than that. And, and part of the reason that I wrote it is a lot of Japanese comics can have a lot of racy material in them, inappropriate material. And so mm -hmm. I wanted one that would be safe for the mm -hmm. younger readers. And that's why there's no swearing, there's no sexual situations. It's all very clean that way. There is a big kiss. Yeah. There's a very big kiss. I counted them, there are three. <laughs> 
in the series. In the whole series? Yes, oh, there are three over the 670 pages. I, I granted you're myself that parents, three. You're that. Yeah, but um, I think uh, really it, you're right about that. I, and the reviewers tended to imply that this series will probably be best enjoyed by tweens rather than high school seniors, even mm -hmm. though the protagonist is a high school senior. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed reading it, even as an adult. Oh, thanks. Um, but I, I can, that was my sense, is that this is for the younger reader. We mm -hmm. can see what kind of things are appealing to older teens. Yeah. And, and especially the changes that you made with Brody's Ghost. Right. To increase the, act, the action, mm -hmm. it's a little more, you know, fists. And Goes a little darker. A little yeah. darker, yeah. heavier, yeah. a little more, right. you know, edgier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, what what drew you to this particular storyline? Brody's ghost. Oh, Mickey's fall. Oh, Mickey falls. falls. Yeah. Well, yeah. I th uh, I had never told a love story before, and I liked the challenge of that. Uh, and uh, so I came up with this concept, and at the risk of giving it all away, uh, there is this uh, uh, imaginary world in which uh, uh, I propose that people do not just fall in love uh, by accident, that it is all orchestrated uh, from behind the scenes. Um, not by Cupid firing arrows, but by a whole uh, network uh, of, uh, of Cupids, I guess you would call them, people <laughs> secretly living among Cupid us. Cupid Corporation. Exactly, the Cupid Corporation. <laughs> uh, uh, they're actually called the Deliverers. Uh -huh. uh, and they live among us, and they secretly uh, arrange uh, for people to fall in love. And maybe the most interesting thing about the concept is love is neither created nor destroyed. It is moved from one couple to another. So as one couple falls out of love, as they lose their love, that love is captured almost like a finite resource and then transferred to someone else, to a couple that has not yet fallen in love. And, huh. and I think there's something appealing about that, that I idea. I love that idea. Oh, Do you personally feel like that, um, that there is a bigger you know, picture when it comes to human relationships and, and love? Uh, you know, that there are sure, <laughs> sure. powers that be. That I think as I worked my way through this story, I began to have to think about a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, um, again, I don't want to give away the ending, but it does uh, get into that territory toward the end. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 there, there's a spiritual aspect uh, mm -hmm. to the conclusion of the story that really elevates the love all the way as high as we can go. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed that aspect of oh, it. Oh, thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, you're one of the, just a few artists who has worked in both comics and children's books. How are the two industries different? Wow, they could hardly uh, be more different. I mean, they, uh, they are just so uh, radically different from one another. I think the comic book industry is mainly dominated by fans. Uh, and uh, so we have this idea of the comic book geek, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so even the publishers, I think, uh, are dominated by these people who are just like fanatically interested in comics. Mm -hmm. I think the children's book industry is a branch of, the, of, the, of literature. And so you have more of the sort of tweed jacket mm -hmm. wearing authors, uh, uh, you know, writing children's books, um, not to go into a stereotype. But I just feel like mm -hmm. when I'm among the children's authors, mm -hmm. suddenly I'm, I feel that I'm uh, among the, these sort of middle-aged people who yeah. are talking about, uh, you know, Virginia Woolf. Right. And then I go over to the comic books and they're all talking about who would win in a fight between <laughs> Superman, the Hulk, and you know what right, I mean? Right, right. It's just a completely a different, different audience, mindset. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of comic I should caution with that because a lot of comic people would object to that characterization. There are among the in the comic book industry people who take it very seriously and people who have written things that are worthy of, of great seriousness and can be called okay. novels truly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for you. being here tonight, Mark. And thank you, Ann Arbor, for joining us. Remember to tune in the second and fourth Tuesday of each month at 10.30 p.m. or look for rebroadcasts of Jeannie on the Beat at various times throughout the week. Ciao, Ann Arbor.